you know what's so lovely this morning as well? When we finished singing, we were still standing in that presence of God. So often we sit straight away, don't we? When we expect the next thing to happen, it's good just to, to absorb and remain in that act of worship in song. Well, good morning to you. Good morning. For those who do not know me, my name is Clive, and I'm John and, and Kyle are away this week, and um, so they've scraped the barrel. Two Baptist ministers away, and an Anglican minister to preach you this morning. Isn't that good? <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good to have you. Uh, for those online, I, I pray that God will bless us this morning as we you know, partake in this act of worship. And um, he will speak to your hearts, open your hearts to receive his word. And through his word, be transformed by his spirit. And that's what we're here for, isn't it? To be transformed by his spirit. And I pray this morning, and I pray now, let me pray. Father God, I, I pray that your spirit will come. It will descend upon your people, descend upon myself, Lord, please. Change our hearts, our minds, more into that of Jesus. And precious Father, as we leave this building later on, will you please, Lord, will you please send us out in the power of your spirit to change this world, to bring hope, to bring truth, to bring life in its fullness. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, when Cindy and I were looking, when we were moving to, to um, Cardiff, we were looking for a church, and I, I, I looked a lot for where we lived in Bondleston, and um, we could find nothing. And we looked in line, and we saw Bethel Church in Pointy Clean. And, um, and during the time of COVID, we used to look at the different services, and um, and I used to hear John speak, and when he spoke, you know, I was just so determined to come to be part of what ministry God's called him to in this church. A man who I found in that, when, I, when he preached, was a man of love and a man of humility. And you know, I, I would love to just be under his authority in this church, knowing that he is under the authority of God. And that makes a difference, isn't it? A man who loves the Lord. I want to see God's kingdom grow and build. A man who is mission-minded, not maintenance-minded. There are so many churches who are in maintenance mode, and what happens then? The church dies gradually. But when you're in mission mode, when you want to share the gospel of good news with people, then good churches will grow. And that's what I love about you know, John and the church that he leads. That, you know, we all like-minded. We don't want to be stagnant. Well, I hope not, because what happens when you go stagnant? You be next to stagnant water? It's not very pleasant, is it? If you go stagnant, that's what happens. But you know, if you have a mission-minded, we will grow and grow, and we'll see God's kingdom come in this mighty power. And many people may not even understand what I'm talking about when I say you want God's kingdom to grow, because, you know, when Jesus came to this earth, he came with one purpose, to demonstrate the kingdom of heaven and bring that kingdom to earth did you know that i hope you do because if you if you don't please my friends try and grasp that understanding that jesus came from heaven to earth to show us the way the way to live in this earth with the kingdom gifting that he has for us and the kingdom mind and that's when we'll see people's lives transformed and as a church, we are commissioned. We are commissioned. We have no choice to grow God's kingdom upon this earth. You may know it as his church. Whatever you know it as, we grow God's kingdom, his church. And we just spread the good news of Jesus, bring his light into the darkness of this world. And this world is getting darker, isn't it? But you know something else? The church is getting lighter. It's being transformed. I thank God for Bethel because you can see the growth. Many are away today. And those who are at home watching today, you know, thank God for you that you can worship from your home, own homes for whatever reason you're there for. I'm going to bring you a reading. And it's from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 4 to 21. 
And this is where Jesus begins his ministry. He's come out of the desert for those 40 days. He's been anointed with his, with Holy Spirit from the Father. And he comes now. And he, listen to this reading. Luke 4, 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole country. Sorry, countryside. He taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. As he stood up to read, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus has come to set the prisoner free. Those who are oppressed, those who live in lives uh, away from God. I'm going to speak to you there today about strongholds. We're going to have a look at this picture up here. That's interesting, isn't it? You can see um, this man carrying lots of boxes on his back. And what happens? He bends him over and over and over. And many people carry weights upon their backs when they're weights upon their shoulders. Well, the weight I want to talk about today is not a physical weight that that man is carrying there. It could be a woman as well. A woman or man is carrying there but spiritual weight that they carry in their lives. Sometimes from a young age, sometimes to much older. And people in the latter year of their, li latter year of their lives also carry weights and what we call spiritual strongholds, not the physical stronghold like that. Thank you for that picture. And I'm going to speak to you about what, what a spiritual stronghold is. It is a, a sort of a habitual pattern of thought which manifests itself in negative pattern of behavior. Do you ever see people with negative patterns of behavior? Do you see it in TV? Do you see it in the news? Uh, do you see it in the church? You know, negative patterns of behavior. Behavior that is not in line with the values of the kingdom values on this earth. And strongholds very much destroy people not only that, that person themselves who carry these spiritual strongholds and which weighs them down, it also destroys the people around them. You know that, don't you? You've seen people with strongholds, spiritual strongholds, who destroy other people and you can see them being destroyed themselves. And that is something I want to look at. And Jesus has come to set us free from all those things. Yet many people, many people in their lives carry, go through their lives carrying these spiritual strongholds, these burdens, this weight upon their shoulder that weigh them down. Maybe you're saying, Clive, you know, that's not me. I'm free. I've got up in those strongholds. Well, before I, I began this sermon and thinking of this sermon, I had to say to the Lord, Lord, reveal to me any strongholds in my life that I may bring it to your cross, that I may be set free to do your work and to grow your kingdom upon this earth. Spiritual strongholds. So often, spiritual strongholds put a wedge between ourselves and God. It sometimes puts a wedge between ourselves and the church. And that relationship with God never is fulfilled. That desire he has for us individually and corporately is never, that desire is never fulfilled because we carry so much stuff in our lives. 
let me just give you some, some um, ideas of examples of spiritual strongholds, you know. Controlling spirit. Who would admit to controlling spirit? Who knows? You know, what about um, fear? How many of us fear? Fear this, fear that, fear to go out, fear to, to uh, flying planes, fear. Lots of fears people have, haven't they? They said the fear of flying shouldn't be the fear of flying, should be the fear of crashing. Shouldn't it? So if you ever have a fear of flying, don't worry about that. Fear of crashing. Okay. What about insecurity? There's so many people with insecurity in this world. They may be on the outside. They wear that mask that makes you look secure on the outside. But when they get behind those doors, then the, their insecurity actually comes out. Interesting, isn't it? You probably know that yourselves. What about the, the spiritual stronghold of lying? You're sort of stretching the truth. If I'm hitting any sort of uh, nails on the head here, please, you know, I'm glad I am because God is revealing that and he wants to set you free from any of those things. You know, in this, in this present life we live in, you look at the TV, look at the media, it's full of pornography. Wow, oh, we, we saturate it with it, even from an early age. Who would ever believe that Hugh Edwards had that stronghold on his life? Who would believe that the many of the, the Christian ministers and leaders have that stronghold on their lives? Who would believe that many of the congregations in our different churches who have that stronghold on their lives? It perverts God's beautiful creation when he made humanity sacred. He made men sacred. He made women sacred. Not to be exploited in any way. What about if I say to you for the stronghold of a impatience or a bad temper? Is that a good one? <laughs> you know, bad tempers are very, very controlling. If you know, I found that you know, through different, speaking to different people, that when that person has a bad temper, the other person just steps back and that person has their way of controlling because you never know what they will do. That bad temper. What about the critical spirit? Everything you find, you criticize. A lot of critical spirits. You read the press now and they, you know, they build people up, don't they? And then they do one thing wrong and they bring them down again. Critical spirit. You know, God is not here. He's here to encourage you. His words are there to encourage you. Inadequacy, infidelity. You know, all these things could lead to things like, you know, spiritual strongholds of addictions and different ways. Maybe, maybe um, you know, alcohol, drugs, or other things. All these strongholds lead somewhere. And sometimes they become idols in your life. And an idol will be there. An idol is there to, to, uh, for you to worship, to take everything from you, but to give you nothing in return. That's what idols do. And if you have these spiritual strongholds, they can turn into, into idols and they will dominate your life and lead you in different areas which are not um, good for you. It brings you nothing but pain and a false hope. And that is how Satan works. He brings pain and false hope to people. So there's patterns of behavior. We will know in ourselves, I, I pray, uh, where I'm hitting the nail on the head. But you know, the first thing we have to do if you want to be free is to recognize those strongholds in our lives. It's to recognize. Unless we recognize them, we can do nothing about them. That man who's carrying all those boxes on his back, if you only recognize that you need, you need to take those boxes off to stand straight, to be free. If we, have, as God's people, want to be free, we have to recognize those strongholds and to get rid of them. Recognition 
so, so important. And Holy Spirit will help us to do that. You know, if you cannot recognize them in yourselves, maybe you can ask God, God, please reveal to me if there are strongholds in my life that is affecting me and preventing me from being that true child that you've designed me to be. If God helps you in that way, and if he doesn't, maybe a friend, a trusted friend can actually tell you that, if they dare tell you that, if you're open. Get someone you can trust where the strongholds can come tumbling down because of this desire of our Lord to set you free. And that's why Jesus came, isn't it? At that wonderful evening, I've come to set the captives free. Do you want to be, f- you know, do you want to be free? That's a big question. And, and you know, some people say, no, I, I'm, I'm actually satisfied with living my life with all of these spiritual strongholds there. I'm, I'm satisfied. I don't want to do anything different. I want to live my life being bent over the weight of those um, spiritual strongholds on me. But that's no good if you want to live the life of the kingdom values. You have to be able to release those and then you're free. Can you just imagine? Can you imagine? I imagine a lot of thoughts are going through your minds now at the moment. You know, I, I, I am probably got this stronghold, that stronghold. And maybe that's right. And my friends, if, you, uh, if that's coming to your mind now, I pray that you will get rid of them you release them and then you can be set free that after all that's why jesus came to do that it'd be a waste of time him coming to this earth to die now behalf unless we take an invitation to be washed and cleansed by the blood of jesus of those strongholds and we can be free did you expect a sermon like this on the the fourth of august and the Sunday morning June holiday time. My friends, you know, holidays are great times. Great times to think sometimes. To see how is my relationship with the Lord? Am I free to do his work upon this earth? You may be saying, but Clive, this stronghold is like a giant in my life. It is so big, I cannot do anything about it. King David, in the Old Testament, when he faced Goliath, he could have had two choices. Look at Goliath and tremble in fear. Or look at Goliath and say, you know something, Goliath, you are too big to miss. Those strongholds. If there are giants in your life, you know the Lord, he will not miss when he aims his spirit at that stronghold to destroy it. But he wants you to be part of that. He wants you to to admit to that stronghold and through that be released. Do you ever find that um, your faith is stagnant and not growing? Are you the same? I've heard people say to me many times that, you know, I'm the same as I was 30 years ago when I became a Christian. My friends, if you're the same as that, you have stagnated. Because as we, as we learn more about Jesus, our lives change, our ways changed. They've got to change because we're becoming more like Jesus, aren't we? We're becoming more like Jesus. Does Jesus have any strongholds? No. We are called to be people who are free. And that's why Jesus came to set the prisoners free. When he said today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And that scripture continues to this day to be fulfilled. For God's spirit sends, is sent to set his people free. So how do we respond to that? How do we get rid of those spirits? Um, those strongholds, I should say. And those, 
you know, negative spirits in our lives. It says here in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world is. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to destroy strongholds. Now the Lord is spirit, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. The land of the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. You cry freedom. That's what the spirit of God does. He brings freedom to those in captivity. I often think that, um, you know, one of the reasons that we have these strongholds and they're with us for the rest of our lives is because Holy Spirit hasn't filled us completely in that way. You know, there's something called com common grace where God, because you're part of God's creation, that he gives you something called common grace. That's a common spirit. Like this, this glass. You know, if, you, if that's us, whatever percentage that is, I'm not particularly bothered with this. You know, that glass shows that as us, as human beings, we have what we call common, common grace, common spirit. But God says, you know, for you to function as my children upon this earth to grow his kingdom, you must be fuller than that, to overflowing. But most of us are satisfied. And you know, if I try to pour the water in to this, you have a blockage. And they're called strongholds. And God can never fill you with a blockage. You have to be open to him filling you and releasing those strongholds. You know, that cling film I put on there prevents this glass from being full. But once that stronghold, that cling film is taken away, then we, as God's children, are open to be filled. Can you imagine you being this, and the Lord fills you, and eventually, what happens? I wouldn't do that because I'll, it will overflow. I'll just have a drink of this if you don't mind. Can you see what I'm saying there? If God fills you with his spirit and you begin to overflow, his spirit will overflow out of you into those around you. Isn't that amazing? That is his desire. But these strongholds prevent him doing that. And maybe today could be the first day in your life where some of those strongholds can be removed. Sometimes it takes time, it takes prayer, it takes communication with God and other people to get those strongholds out and destroy them. But that is God's desire. And if that giant in your life is so big, you think, I can do nothing about this. I've been like this all my life. You know, the King of Kings can actually just aim that slingshot at it and destroy it straight away. But it takes two. It took David that confidence to sling that, to, to wind that slingshot around. And it takes you to have that confidence to say, Jesus, yes, I'm here. I want to be free. The, the wonderful thing about Jesus is this. He will never, ever force anybody to do something they do, they do not want to do. He will not force them. He gives you that freedom to choose. But my friends, I encourage you. I'm saying this to many of you today who are far more experienced Christians than me, who've got a, probably a deeper love for Jesus than me, who walk with him uh, much longer than I have. But I'm saying to those who, um, all of us to stay, we all have strongholds that need to be broken for us to be free. 
And Jesus, by his spirit, says, I am here to break those strongholds and to set you free. My friends, big question. Do you want to cry freedom? Do you want to... No, many of you are saying, don't know, don't know, cry. I'm fearful of spirit. That's one fear. Are you fearful of Holy Spirit? My friends, you know, I've seen Holy Spirit and some churches use Holy Spirit in a different way. He's a person. A lot of people can recognize and identify with the Father, Father God. They can identify with, with Jesus. But when it comes to Holy Spirit, they find it difficult. You know, Holy Ghost used to be called in the Bible. You know, ghosts are creepy and scary, aren't they? But you know something? When Jesus said, this, said these words to his disciples, I'm going away and I'm going to send you another counselor who will be with you forever. The counselor is Holy Spirit. Now, I've spoken in our Bible study group of this word. The word another in the Greek is alos. And the word alos means the same as. I will send you another counselor. That's what Jesus is saying. I will send you my Holy Spirit who is the same as me, said Jesus. So if you fear Holy Spirit, that means you fear Jesus. And if you fear Jesus, you fear the Father because the three, the three are one together. And they all have the same attributes of love and peace and wanting you to be free. In the end, the choice is yours. And later on, we're going to have Holy Communion. And um, maybe through that time, as you receive that gift of bread and wine, maybe it'll give you an opportunity just to come. Come to the table, the table of love, the table of brokenness, because Jesus' body was broken, and the table of, of wine represented by the juice where the blood, the body of Christ was broken and the blood was shed to wash away our sins. Today is a special day. This day, the 4th of August, is a special day for many people because today you will be set free. Because I'm going to pray now for you um, and ask Holy Spirit to come and do his work. Do you mind me doing that? Upstairs, do you mind me asking Holy Spirit to come and set you free? Okay. Could I ask you please to stand? If, you, if you're able to stand, please stand. And those at home watching on the, on the, um, on the screen, you know, you stand or sit, it's entirely up to you. And I'm just going to invite Holy Spirit. He has the, the sovereignty, okay? Holy Spirit is sovereign. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. And he will deal with you directly as you just wait for the moment. And I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. Holy Spirit, come upon your people. Holy Spirit, you're a God of love. You're a God of power. You're a God who wants to bring his children freedom. I pray that you will descend upon your people now. Precious Holy Spirit, descend upon your people. Convict them of the strongholds they may have. And once you're convicted of those strongholds, just take them. Physically look at the cross of Christ. And take them and place them at the foot of the cross of Christ. Spirit of God, break into the lives of your children now. And Lord, as you take, take those, those strongholds, that baggage that we carry, as you take those away, Lord, 
as we bring them to you and we take them away. Lord, please set us free to do your work in growing your kingdom upon this earth. pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Please remain standing.